Well, good morning, Downsview. Pastor Pete here at the church, in the lobby of our church anyway, at Wednesday or on Wednesday morning. Pam and I are actually going to be taking a week's holidays beginning tomorrow, and so this will be the last touching base for a few days. Lord willing, next Thursday we'll be back to it. I want to encourage you, please, to be preaching or praying for the preaching this coming Sunday. Ivan Sobotin, who is one of our deacons here, who is a fine man of God who handles the word very well, is going to be taking the pulpit this coming Sunday, and he will be in the book of Acts chapter 27. If you want to have a look over that, it's a bit of a longer narrative account to familiarize yourself with. I want to just spend a few minutes in the 26th chapter of the book of Acts this morning. That will set us up a little bit for what Ivan will have to say on Sunday. But really, it came out of the Bible in one year reading plan that we're involved in. And it is an account of the fruitfulness of the faithfulness of the Apostle Paul. Now that Sounds like an outline for one of my sermons, I know, but the reality is that's really what you see going on in this chapter. Festus, of course, is the, the, one of the Roman officials who has brought the Apostle Paul on these, up on these charges, or at least people have brought charges against the Apostle Paul, the Jewish people he speaks of here, and he says that these Jewish unbelievers are suggesting that the Apostle Paul is not consistent, his ministry is not consistent with a, a God-honoring ministry. And so he has been brought before the, the governor, and now he has appealed to Caesar. That's what we saw yesterday. And so the Apostle Paul has come to at least the representative of Caesar, who is King Agrippa. And of course, King Agrippa here is... Um, has no dog in the fight, so to speak. He's here to pronounce justice, and he listens to what the Apostle Paul has to say. In Acts chapter 26 and verse 19, the Apostle Paul speaks, and he says, Therefore, O King Agrippa, uh, in light of answering some of these charges, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision that I had received. And of course, the Apostle Paul is referring to the vision of Christ and the meeting with the Lord Jesus that he had on the road to Damascus. And he's just elucidated that back in verse 12 to 18. And so here we are in verse 19. I was not obedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout the whole region of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. And it's for this reason the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. And to this day, I have had the help that comes from God, so I stand here testifying to both great and small, saying nothing but what the prophets and, the Mo and Moses said would come to pass, that the Christ must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he will proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. Do you see what the Apostle Paul has done? He is faithful to his calling, even in what appears on the surface to be his personal defense. You, you and I would consider, you know, Paul is saying, I want justice. There's a lot of talk about justice today, isn't there? And he's like, listen, this is the whole issue is that I'm here to answer these false charges against me and these people aren't doing right and, and I demand, no. His demand to stand before the governing authorities is his effort to be faithful to the calling of Christ upon his life, that he would preach the glories of his risen Lord, the one who called him on the road to Damascus and the one who has sent him into the world on these various missionary journeys to speak about the need that everyone, Jew or Gentile, black or white, rich or poor, male or female, whatever the issue is, whatever the distinctions and the differences are in the world, here's the similarity, here's the great golden thread that ties us all together. We need the Lord. And so he's been out speaking and he's been faithful to that calling. And, and I just love how he takes, you know, the opportunity here to, to speak before King Agrippa. And he says, listen, the, the charges that they're against me are false. That's all we'd have to say. All right, Festus and the rest of you who've brought me here, it, the burden of proof is on you. The burden of proof is not on the defendant. The burden of proof is on the prosecutor. So you think that I've done these things wrong. You tell him why. No, no. 
Paul's like, here's a great opportunity yet again for me to speak about the truth of the gospel of Christ. And of course, Festus, who's brought him there, says in verse 24, and he's as he, as Paul was saying these things in his defense, it's in his defense, but you can see why his motivation is there. It said, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. How many of us have been accused of a lack of intellectual fortitude by the unbelieving world when we simply come and say, Jesus is Lord. There is no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved. There is one way. He, as Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The, these kind of things that people just say, you know, they just it's just foolish talk. It's not politically correct. There's, you know, all these other religions and ideas out there in the world. Who can possibly be right? How can you know? Well, the Apostle Paul is simply faithful to his calling. And Paul, answering in light of Festus' outburst there in verse 26, uh, 25, Paul said, I'm not out of my mind, most excellent Festus. Most, this is not false flattery. This is answering his opponent in a way that gives his ministry ongoing credibility. Do you see that? Boy, I wish I would do this better. Think of how my character is being reflected when I'm trying to reflect on and reflect really the beauty of Christ and what I have to say about Christ. To speak in a way that another person would say, well, he, he wasn't a jerk, he wasn't a slanderer of my position. He, he spoke and he seemed to speak even patiently and, and with due respect. We say it all the time, now with all due respect, does anybody speak with all respect that is due another person? Not likely. And Paul's making an effort to do it. He's faithful to his calling and he's faithful to reflect the kind of character of Christ in the midst of that faithfulness to that calling. He says, I'm not, of my, I'm not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I'm speaking true and rational words. For the king knows about these things. And to him I speak boldly. For I am persuaded that none of these things has escaped his notice. For this has not been done in a corner. Paul's not like I've been you know, hiding this or pretending that I'm not doing this. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? Look how Paul just shifts. This is my whole point. I want someone else to come to understand who Christ is. And, and this is my reason that I'm making my defense so that it's an opportunity to, to preach and, and, and make much of Christ yet again. Do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe, Paul says, speaking to Agrippa. And Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? That's the line that we know from this, right? Right? Thou almost persuadest me to be a Christian, the King James puts it. It's that wonderful phrase that King Agrippa has to say here. And Paul's answer to him is, whether short or long, as Agrippa said, in, in such a short time, do you want to persuade me to be a Christian? Is that, is that all it takes? Is that, what, is that what you think? It's almost like it's got to take a long time, Paul. You're not expecting people to just make a decision in a minute, are you? You have to build relationships. You have to take time. You have to build understandings. And there's, there's got to be time for that, I'm sure. And there's certainly benefit to that kind of thinking, friends. But when there are people who are desperate for Christ, none of us can assume we're going to have 17 steps of meetings uninterrupted without any crisis or problem in a person's life and then we're going to ask the obligating question at the 19th question or whatever our particular plans and ideas on these things work we, we all i'm saying is that we're not promised that and, and and the apostle paul doesn't assume he's promised that listen whether short or long i would that god i would to god that not only you but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for the chains. 
says, look, I don't want other people to be in chains for Christ like I am. That's not my goal for anybody. But what's my goal in doing this? Is that all who would hear me and any who would hear me would find themselves like I am, which is living a life in submission to the king of the universe, to recognizing myself as a citizen, not a rebel in this kingdom who's bowed my knee to the legitimate lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, who's bowed my knee in abject submission, even when I don't understand or figure it all out or don't understand some of the things that he's going to expect of me or how I'm going to have to live in light of this. Sure, there's a lot of unanswered questions, but you see what Paul's saying? There's a fruitfulness to his faithfulness in at least the king is saying, hmm, I see what you're up to. I see what your point is. Sometimes that's the fruit of our faithfulness, isn't it? People understand who we are. People understand what we're about. They understand that we really do think there's only one way, that we really do believe that they're wrong if they don't believe this, that there's something deficient in their lives if they do not have the Holy Spirit living within them, that it's not just okay, and that yes, our judgment, our conclusion based on an analysis of fact is that the way you're living is not the way you ought to be living, that the joy that you think you have is a false and fleeting joy, that the temporary is, is far less valuable than the eternal, that the Lord Jesus is in charge of this world, whether we acknowledge or, him or not or like it or not. Yes, we speak like that. Just even that, people get it, what we're about. And you know, Downsview, we've just begun to get back together. I'm so grateful for those who are involved in the service and now who are preparing for this coming Sunday. And I want to encourage you to keep watching on, online. And I want to encourage you to make your phone calls here to the church, 416-241-1681. Just leave a message here and Catherine will get you a seat and assign it and get back to you for that and that you can come be amongst the people of God to, to hear his word read, to hear his word preached, to hear the truth of the gospel prayed out amongst God's people, to be around in the very presence of the people that God has designed you to be around, and that the fruit of your faithfulness to the cause of Christ would even be seen in a simple attendance to a church service. Yep, got to wear your mask, got to use the hand sanitizer, got to keep the physical distancing, got to be careful with the, the cleaning afterwards. Yep, we, we have to be dismissed immediately, not just out of the church, but off the property. We can't hang around together for very much time. But friends, what a blessing it was last Sunday to be here. And I just want to encourage you in light of, you know, the Apostle Paul's determination to show his faithfulness to the cause of Christ in the brief little hint of fruitfulness that we see there, that at the very least, the fruit of his faithfulness is that people knew who he was. And would we, as the people around us who think, well, why, why are you going back to church already? Uh, you know, I, I heard you can't do this, or you can't do that, or frankly, other church, churches that aren't sure that it's worth it. Friends, I, I just think we have to get our heads around the idea of the privilege that it is to be Christians and for the world to see us as Christians. They will know that we are Christians by our love, our love for what? And for whom it's our love for one another. That's what that verse is, is going with. So thanks for your attention today. Lord willing, we'll see you in a week, friends. Cheers. Bye for now.